say good morning, role players. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like that. You don't like that? Come on, say good morning. No! All right. I don't like that every day. All fine. Well, I'll say it. Good morning, role players. Welcome to another episode of In and Out of Character, a role players podcast. I hope you are having a wonderful start for the new years. Uh, today I'm talking with someone named Jax. They run a blog called Feed the Horde. They are a wonderful cook and a wonderful role player. And I think we hit on a lot of cool, cool topics for this uh, in this conversation. And I hope that you like to. I hope that you enjoy it. I do have to apologize. I tried my best. For some reason, I don't understand my microphone. I'm learning every single episode. I'm trying to get better and better. But for some reason, you can hear my child in the background, especially when I talk. I do not know why. Sometimes my microphone doesn't pick up anything in the background, and sometimes it picks up everything in the background. I know it has to do with gain. I don't understand why. I don't adjust it. I don't move it around. I don't tweak it. I leave it at the same thing every single episode so i apologize for that i did my best to cut it out all right with that said let's bring her on in there we go thank you oh my goodness i dropped the ball on that hard Uh, hi how you doing i'm good (laughs) but it did put you on the spot so you know i think that's fair oh man I, uh, I, uh, I am so excited to get to talk to you. I've been thinking about this moment since I laid eyes on your blog, since our <laughs> friend, our mutual friend, Disco Tech Priest, or Tertambe, <laughs> y'all guys have heard me talk about him a lot. I, I have read all of your blog and I, oh, I, yeah. I love your blog. And okay. So for everybody listening, um, Jax here runs a blog called Feed the Horde. And Feed the Horde is something I I never even considered. In all my years of role-playing, it is a Warcraft it's a Warcraft cooking blog, but everything is in character. <laughs> yep. Which is so cool. And I love that so much. How did you get into that? Um, well, so cooking has always been kind of a passion of mine. There's a little bit of a story behind that, not to, uh, well, it's a conversation, so of course it's, it's kind of okay to babble a little bit, I guess. Uh, yeah. Anyhow, babble so, away. so, uh, food has always been really important to me. I, uh, the story behind Jax himself, the character, um, mm-hmm. It kind of mirrors a lot of my own, and for a while, um, I actually had very limited access to food. So when I like was able to overcome that situation and kind of get where I am now, um, food sort of became my love language. I love to feed people. I love to cook. And also when I was growing up, um, I always wanted to try and like learn how to cook. Right. But it was always Mm -hmm. presented to me as, oh no, well, this is difficult. You're not going to be able to figure it out. Or, oh no, this is, this is too hard. You're not going to be able to do this. And that really kind of. What you want to, you want (laughs) to learn how to cook. Uh, Uh Let me gatekeep you from one of the, what from one of the the, the most necessary basic right? skills known to man everybody's got to eat right and yeah. um like so part part of it i found out later was because my mother was not a very good cook and mm. um my father used to joke that uh the only seasoning she knew of was salt and the only temperature that the stove had was high so everything came out <laughs> extra salty and burnt but uh-huh. um, I actually grew up overseas, and one of the places where um, I was living was in Germany, and we were living there. My father, um, he worked with the military, but not for the military, if that makes sense. So we traveled mm-hmm. quite a bit. He was a, a contractor. Bit. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. You're the first person to get it on the first try. Yes, that's exactly what it was. Um, I'm dabbing. Nobody can see me, but I am dabbing with my <laughs> cup of coffee. Um, so yeah, so we lived, um, we, we lived a lot, uh, of places overseas, but we didn't, I didn't have access to the base or anything. So like, I didn't get any American culture until, um, 
until the end of my uh, at the end of high school actually is when I moved back to America. Um, mm-hmm. My friend actually wants to start up a podcast. Uh, we're waiting to, for my life to kind of calm down. Um, called Blind Spots, where I fill mm-hmm. him in on like lore behind video games, which he doesn't know about, and he um, records my reactions to like pop culture stuff that I missed by not living in America. Anyhow, mm-hmm. I got way off topic, but um, no, you're good. So uh, one of the time, to- like the last time I really lived overseas, I was living in Germany, and that time we actually had my grandmother with us, and my grandmother was like. I, I know I made a crack about my mom being a bad cook, but she, my grandmother was awful. She also had uh, dementia kind of coming on. So if she was trying to make something, we had this rotation where it would be like, I would take certain days to, to cook. My mother would take certain days to cook. My grandmother would take certain days to cook. And whenever it was my grandmother's turn, um, she, if she couldn't, didn't have an ingredient, couldn't find an ingredient, she would swap it out with something that looked similar which meant Mm. a lot of baking soda in place of powdered sugar, uh, sugar in the place of salt, stuff like that. And most of this stuff Mm. came out like just awful. So we had our schedule on a whiteboard and um, uh, we kind of conspired that we like my mother and I would take some of her days so that we could like actually eat. Um, But during that time, uh, I started getting online and because like, I had still been told, like, you go from, from being told, oh, you know, cooking's too hard, you can't do it, you'll just, like, burn water, and then you get from, and then you go from, okay, well, by the way, you're now this thing that you've, you've been told your whole life you can't do, you're going to be doing it four days a week. Um, right. So I got online and uh, taught myself via YouTube how to cook a lot of things, and turned out that I, I just love it. I really loved it. So then when I was... Um, uh, uh, playing jacks on um, World of Warcraft. Uh, at one point, he accidentally stumbled into uh, be- like by walking into a role playing group. Um, they were basically they ran the Golden Keg um, in Stormwind on uh, Wormrest Accord, I think it was, mm-hmm. and so he kind of got hired on. And as doing that. Um, I, like they started coming up with like food ideas and I was like, well, why don't we actually make these? Like this is something that we can really do. And it just kind of took off from there, kind of combined my love of storytelling and role playing and my love of food. And mm-hmm. it just kind of went from there. That sounds fantastic. I love that. I I love when because I, I love it when role play turns into something more than just role play. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Oh, absolutely. I love that so much. And the fact that I'm, I'm also on Warm Rest Accord, by the way. I've been on Warm Rest Accord since, oh, God, I have no idea. It's been years, years and years and years. That's um, awesome. On... I, am, I was actually thinking last night that I should probably get back, get back into the game, but um, just real life Although, has just made stuff ugh, so hard it's been crazy <laughs> yeah it's so difficult to role play when when your life itself will just not allow you to permit it yeah um but uh i uh but i do want to mention uh that while i can tell that you're a horde player um oh no i play both no, no so, <laughs> i was about so to the... i was about to ignite the the ancient feud between the horde and the oh Alliance. no no no, so when oh god, I don't even remember what they're called anymore. The the void elves, I don't remember what their actual name is. Uh-huh. Um so when the void elves came out, um I really wanted to get back into playing Jax, but his storyline on the horde side was basically had basically kind of chased him uh into uh defecting and having to go undercover. So, uh-huh. so when the Void Elves came out, um, I decided that he was going to hide among them by literally just dumping ink on his own head and posing as a Void Elf. That is wonderful. I love that. His, God, I love my, that so much. my character name for that like, uh, is uh, Inky Jacks. So I kind of... <laughs> 
leaned into it. Uh, it was really funny watch because I would kind of play it up in RP, and it was so much fun watching people slowly put together that this was not right. <laughs> yes, I love the creative ways people have gotten around the stupid, the, the just the dumb. I'm sorry, I really hate. I, I think I've ranted about this in another episode, but I I really hate the the language barrier between the Horde and the Alliance. Yeah, I man. hate it so much. It's like almost um, all of my characters have some way or another that um like allowed me to play them on both sides um my first character is a draenei named uh, katichla and she also during the wrathgate event um she was she her guild actually is what spawned this uh they were going after undead and she had found some undead that were trying to like flee and so she um, basically got them back to uh, Orgrimmar, but her guild w was after her because um, I was not playing by the rules that they had set. And so she oh, had no. to defect and through a lot of like shaman magic and stuff, she had to take on the guise of a blood elf. But for the mm -hmm. first few months that I was playing her, she didn't speak Orcish. So her her like ability to communicate was really like she was she struggled and it was a lot of fun and like it like people really seem to like that and like gravitate towards her just from the kind of weird way but then if i ever wanted to play her on alliance side i could because i just put her back in her normal like draenei form and kind of same with Jax, because he's got the one where he's got ink dumped on his head but then like when the volpera came out um, my friend wanted to level one of them, so I just swapped back uh, to that side, and like he just took a shower. <laughs> I was so excited for Missa Pandaria because I was just going to make the same character on both the Horde and the Alliance side, yeah. and I've and I've attempted that a few times. It just never seems to work out well um, because you're you're unfortunately you're tied between having to switch between Alliance and Horde all the time to do different things. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, and it's really hard because since that stupid fucking language barrier is there, excuse my language, um, <laughs> Watch uh, your the, fucking the, the Horde, I know, I know, <laughs> um, the Horde Alliance can't really mix that well. Although that seems to be not a big thing, like a thing anymore, because I, I just joined back up with uh, World of Warcraft Roleplay, <laughs> and I'm starting to notice that Horde and Alliance members are in the same guild. Yeah, so apparently... I don't know, but but I've had a friend that was telling me that too, and it just it's like I really should get back and go like look, but at the same time with the even with like the subscription system that that Blizzard has right now, like mm -hmm. is it worth putting down that money when I don't know like what day to day even looks like anymore? Right. Yeah, uh, I can tell you right now. While the so for the Warm Rest Accord, do you remember way back when uh, the uh, the scandal happened. We found out that someone had unfortunately died because of something that happened in the Blizzard community or in the Blizzard uh, team. And uh, there was this big scandal that happened. And it, it turned out that a lot of the, the Blizzard work culture was basically just frat, frat, frat bros. And they would trade uh, the nudes of their female co-workers, like oh, baseball yeah, yeah, cards yeah, yeah. or shit. You remember all that? Yeah, that so, was like either early COVID or right before COVID, right? Yeah, it was like right before. Yeah, no, I think it was. Or was this something yeah, different? Yeah, right at the No, no, it was it's right the same around. One where somebody had, like, there was this girl and she had, like, been getting sexually harassed and yeah. by one of her co-workers. And they made her go on a fucking um, a business trip with him. Dude. Yes. Uh -uh. The, yeah. Some real, real fucked up shit. So mm -hmm. people rightfully got very pissed about this, and there was a uh, max, a mass exodus from yeah. World of Warcraft. Yep. And uh, yep. Uh, that was also part of the reason and, why I stopped playing. Yeah, and I, I do not blame you. I one hundred percent. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I hardly. I, at the time, I hardly played World of Warcraft, and I don't blame anybody at all for ever wanting to stop uh playing yeah uh, because of this i i absolutely 100 percent understand um but the role players sort of kind of got waste like the role players themselves got 
uh, what's the term? They, they, because a lot of people left World of Warcraft, and that left a lot of stories untold. That left mm-hmm. a lot of characters who had significant others without a partner all of a sudden, mm-hmm. and that left like it left just it. It was like the the people in Blizzard do not understand exactly how fucking far this um the 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 ripple effects were yeah and so what happened is the people who did stay um the people who did stay and again that's y'all that's their choice i'm not gonna nag on them for doing that when they did stay uh they found warm rest accord being very uh warm rest accord on the alliance side became very sparse like the role play scene yeah, and um, clickish, like really clickish. Yes, like it's always been yes. clickish, but like extra. Not to the, not to the. Uh, I wouldn't say like to the extent of Guild Wars, uh, Guild Wars Two clickish, uh, which was yeah. incredibly <laughs> clickish. But like at least you could go to um, the Blue Recluse and like meet some people or yeah. something like that. Um, but now, uh, like I go over to the Blue Recluse sometimes. And there's just fucking nobody there yeah. ever. Even on like when you would think the busiest night would be, just and that's actually nobody. Part of why. So for a long time, I played basically. Uh, since Jax worked at the Golden Keg, I would get home from work every night and I would log on and I would basically do a second job of playing behind the bar at the Golden mm-hmm. Keg in Stormwind. And the my main reason for that was um, because I wanted people to have somewhere where they could go and always get some kind of interaction. And right. like, so like if I was online and and you walked in and I didn't know you from Adam, like you're still going to be able to get RP. And right. I felt like as somebody, because I get like, I'm, a, I'm, I'm both a the type of person who has no problem walking up to people and starting my own RP, and I also mm-hmm. get very, very anxious doing that. And oh, God, so... same, same. <laughs> so I was trying to kind of do my part and, like, like, basically make it easy for anybody to just walk up, have RP, you will be mm-hmm. engaged with, you will have somebody interested and invested in your story, um without like having to like i can't tell you how many times i've like tried to walk up to to group rp or something and like you try and kind of insert yourself and you're like you're being real polite and stuff you're not doing the whole like you know some people jump in and try and just create chaos and crap Mm -hmm. but like you just get it but then like you when you're trying to like be polite you're trying to play by the rules you're just trying to be friendly and you still get snubbed and that's that that can be disheartening Right, and, and it certainly sucks because the role play, like like people in the community, need to understand that when you're role playing, you need other people mm-hmm. to role play with. This is not a like there are sure there are solo t- role play tabletop games out there now, but for the most part, role playing is not a solo thing. You need people to express that narrative story, and you need people there to return that yes. narrative story. Yep. So what winds what winds up happening in the especially in clicky like and i don't know what world wars 2 roleplay is today uh i should get back in there and just sort of check it out just to kind of catch myself back up with it just a little bit but it would what would happen is you would find yourself in a situation where if you could break into a group Mm -hmm. they felt very I don't know. You felt very disconnected from them. Yeah. Does, that, does that make sense? And, yeah. and when people feel disconnected from you, a storyteller, a fellow storyteller, then they don't know how to continue your story for yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. And and it just it becomes oh god. I'm sorry. I'm I'm thinking about like just so many times where that has happened to people because I do get it. I used to go into the blue recluse uh, with a worgen, and I would just. I would, uh, and I do this in Guild Wars 2 as well. Um, I go in to like the hubs and I just start bartending. And the mm-hmm. reason why I just start bartending is because I want to give people that interaction. I exactly. want to be there to to help 
them get into it because I fucking love this hobby and I want the continue. I, I want the community to succeed. Exactly. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm ranting exactly. now. <laughs> exactly. I'm ranting. You get it. Like that's exactly it. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I just went a whole ass tangent. <laughs> <laughs> My apologies. But no, that that's exactly it. That's exactly what it is. Is it's like this is, it's it, it's a literal community, and if if it it can't be everyone against no one, you mm-hmm. know. It's like you can't. Mm-hmm. You gotta you gotta reach out to people. You gotta play your part you get, by you gotta playing. Gotta be accepting part. of people yeah. as yes. well. And like, well, some people are like, well, that's not you know really fair because what if I want to play an asshole? It's it is absolutely easy to play an asshole and then also like make yourself easy to RP with. Like yes. that's not an excuse. Like most of As, the like with especially with Katichla, um, most of the people that I would run into were like people who played villains. Like that was their whole job was to be the server villain kind of thing. And they made it so easy to play against them and they're some of my best friends now. And um so it's like, well, my character is X, Y, or Z. Well, that's not an excuse. That's mm-hmm. that's not an excuse. You could play whatever kind of mood, whatever kind of trope you want, and still make yourself accessible. Right. Yes, you're absolutely right. Because, like, you... So there, there's, of course, you need some friction in mm-hmm. roleplay. You need some friction for as a storytelling device. Yes. But, th- it, but that does not mean in any form or fashion that you have to have that out of character yes. you just explain to people like there was this guy i don't know if you remember him but he was on the world rest accord his name was Nyehe, right <laughs> and he was he would wear a purple robe right and he was basically homeless but uh-huh. he was this guy who would god i miss Nyehe. um he was this guy who would just he was like that cartoonish uh, villain with like uh-huh. the the twirly mustache uh-huh. and everything like that, and he would just like go around making like not chaos for people, but like like just like pretending to be that that childhood villain, yeah. and and it would pull so many people together. God, if if Nihe ever hears this, I want him to know that he did <laughs> such a wonder to help bring people together for the role play and. His character, yes, was a was something that people had to work against as a quote unquote antagonist, but he, the player himself, was just so wonderful about it. Yeah, and that makes a huge difference, especially if you're like a, that's another thing that I notice a lot, and not even just with like MMO culture, but like in in other like role play culture, it's like people have can they tend to have a hard time um, distancing the out of character from the in character. And it's like, you can't have a story without, like you said, without friction. And somebody needs to bring that friction. And whether that is going to be like a DM who is playing the world that you're against, or somebody like Nyehehe who is playing somebody like who is meant to be rallied against, you have to have that friction. But it's really there's and i think part of it is because there is so much inherently doing anything artistic um, anything that involves writing that involves role playing getting into a character getting into that zone it's just very inherently personal it's very very personal and it's easy for um for some people to get a little bit too attached to the fact that okay well this is personal like i don't know about you but um i like when i have like a major storyline going or when i am like i'm a novelist also and a lot of like my novels or ongoing stories they are they usually end up having some element of some shit i'm working through like in my personal life like um and so that makes it very inherently personal and a lot of people they don't realize that they're that it's happening because i think i really think that more people do that than don't um and so when people feel like something bad is happening to their character 
uh, it's real easy for them to kind of get up in arms and feel like that bad thing is actually happening to them. And you got to step away. You got to step back and have that conversation and like, like, be like, look, yeah, look, I'm playing a villain. Like, it kind of comes down to um, like consent is a is like an ongoing topic like do you consent to this kind of thing you understand that even though i'm saying these mean things i myself have nothing wrong with you or your character this is all just stuff for you to play against yes precisely i and I, yeah it, it always breaks my heart when when someone is just like, and of course there are people out there, don't get me wrong, people who are listening to this and are like shaking their heads. There are people out there who are genuinely just assholes and, and they're oh, yes. just there to they fuck with exist. you. They absolutely exist, yes. Yeah, yep. they absolutely exist. But don't assume that that's the first thing someone's trying to do. Um, yeah. And if you are someone who is trying to be an antagonist, whether it's in role-playing or uh like our mmo role playing our form role playing like whatever kind of role playing if you are someone who is actively attempting to be the antagonist going oh it goes a long way when you just reach out to the other players Uh and say hey this is who i this is what i'm trying to do this is what i'm about and like if 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 that's okay with you i can help drive some sort of narrative story and work with them and just work with them on like safety tools or stuff like that it just yeah, it will and, help you so much and it's kind of like and also like if you have gone through a, a scene with somebody and they're not somebody that you know super well and you feel like hmm, this might have been a little bit intense like mm-hmm. reach out almost like it's almost like like i want to use the word aftercare like just be like hey that felt like that might have been kind of intense are you good mm-hmm. are we good is there anything that i need to know for the future is this something you want to continue you know mm-hmm. you've got to have those conversations even if it doesn't feel like well that takes me out of my rp well i mean you're not going to be logged on all the time i mean yeah <laughs> and and for the i mean and it, just because it might take you out of the role play i mean homie again if the other people uh, not to you personally but to anybody mm-hmm. listening who might be invested in this conversation if if you're worried about being taken out of the rp you are going to be taken out of the rp regardless if the people you are role playing with just decide to stop role playing with you right Yep. Like it is it is so much better and safer to just be there and, and to be an active like not to do not to be just a, 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 a not to be just another the character, but to actually be an active member of the community. Yes. And keep in mind it's a lot easier to have a in a especially in an MMO where the setting is basically real time. Uh, unless uh, an expansion drops and then suddenly you're just having to decide if you're jumping forward seven years or whatever. Oh um, my goodness, yeah. <laughs> but like, this is happening in real time and with other people around. And it's kind of like, you know how you're having a, an, uh, a disagreement with your significant other and like, don't vent to your your uh, your parents or your, your close friends about it because mm-hmm. you end up like in a situation where you have to retcon something, um, the people that were there, they're still going to remember that. And they're still going to like act as though it happened. So if something is making you uncomfortable or you're afraid that you might be making someone else uncomfortable, it's a lot easier to just swallow it, talk to them in the moment than it is to try and convince like 12 other people to retcon something. Yeah. It, it really like, and there are, I would say that there are cases where you could like, you could talk to, it, it, it really sort of depends on like how close the people are to you mm-hmm. and like how uncomfortable something made to you. Like if someone does something to your character and you get put in this position where you feel like you don't have a choice, but to continue. Mm-hmm. And then like afterwards, you're like, I really, I really didn't like that. And you could talk with your, your group uh, and everyone who's involved in, in like, I feel like there's an argument there of being able to retcon that, but when you're yeah. playing with somebody who, when you're playing with people, and often more times than not, you're playing with complete strangers. Right. Um, I, I say that, but like as you get more and more into the hobby, especially MMO role playing, you're going to be playing with 
people you you know a lot more you're going to start building that narrative bond and uh, the bonds between characters and yourself and the other players but when you're playing with strangers there's like you just like it's it's hard to it's hard to ask them to do that because they just they just honestly just might not care yeah and which, sometimes which... well and sometimes so i actually had a situation like that where i forget the person's name but for whatever reason he came into the bar and he decided that he wanted to um like create trouble and he did um he did do me the the what's it called the courtesy of messaging me and being like hey what are your rules for your character and like do you like what do you allow and i said i will allow anything you want but keep in mind actions have consequences and whatever you're doing is in a you know a room with her like it was a pretty full house i was like there's like like 20 other people in here so whatever you do actions have consequences so he decided didn't even know my character didn't know me and he decided to shoot him so <laughs> i let uh-huh and so i let him get shot i let jacks get shot and he got pretty badly injured and of course and then the guy got really confused when everybody else went up in arms about it and like like tore off after his character and whenever he tried to come back and he tried to come back into the the bar a few times and um like i because he was so badly injured um and there was a big thing where he was actually like you couldn't use healing magic on him um because a part of his storyline so like for it, it kind of gave me a three-day break but he was, he's a the character itself is a rogue so i would just like <laughs> sit in like nearby so i could like listen to conversations listen and stuff. yeah i've done yeah. that shit too oh yeah i don't blame you i've done that shit too <laughs> and um but he got really mad and he got really mad at me and he's like well why didn't you tell them to stop why didn't you tell them that you said i could could like do whatever and i said you did i did tell you you could do whatever but i also told you that actions have consequences and this is the consequence now you've got a bunch of people pissed off at you i'm well, playing turns along. Out people... I, yeah turns out people don't you like would... it when you shoot you know some little street the bartender for no reason yeah yeah, it, it turns out if you just go around shooting people, other people just don't fucking like that. Yeah. Wow, who could have fucking thought it? I know, it's like such a novel thought. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I've done a lot of ranting this episode, I'm sorry. Don't I've been, uh, what was that? I'm sorry. I said don't apologize. I, I, I've, uh, it's, it's really good to get to talk to somebody else who understands, uh, the roleplay community, well, uh, like I do, um, uh, at least to have them on, because I, uh, these are things I've been wanting to talk about for quite, quite some time. Yeah, yeah, and, like, man, I know you've spoken about this with, like, uh, Disco, but consent is such a huge thing. And it I've been really on is. the receiving end of stuff that has that happens that is not consensual, like more than once. And mm -hmm. I mean, I'm talking about like aside from assault. Um, but I had somebody um, who decided that they didn't want to play anymore, and their out was to have their character commit suicide and blame it Ooh. on mine because she didn't reciprocate his advances. Wow, and that, that fucking I, mm -hmm. sucks. And that I feel wow. definitely should have been asked for consent because he actually was a friend of mine at a character. We talked a lot. I knew that he wanted to like kind of step away and take a break from the role playing game. And we had been discussing ideas and that was not one of them. <laughs> that doesn't sound like an idea. I mean, okay. So there is this thing, right? It's this, it's this knowledge that not everyone, like everyone has their, genre right mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. and that like like people like their horror books people like their fantasy books people mm -hmm. like to mix their horror and fantasy and stuff like that mm -hmm. but people for some odd reason do not ever sit down and and consider like uh, maybe i shouldn't say that what i what i should say maybe is that when you are coming into role playing you need to take into consideration what everyone else's um limits what everyone are. else's yes what their limits are yeah, what their like, what their genre are is zones like where are your yeah. comfortable zones and i feel like so somebody had uh, mentioned um once before and uh, because i 
like I said, I'm a novelist. I also write a lot of short fiction. And um, somebody had meant, uh, like you can tell by my website, uh, somebody had mentioned that the reason they like, um, like say fan fiction over novels is because they can look and see what the content warnings are. Is this going to have child abuse? Is this going to have uh, sexual abuse? Is this going to have suicide or eating disorders or any, or like an animal gets hurt? Anything that they would like normally that is going to jar them, like they can tell pretty quickly just from like the tags on a story that's posted on like AO3, is this going to have that? But then right. when it comes to like a novel, you don't really get that get same that. courtesy yeah. right you and have to you have to go online to does the dog die yeah and, yes, and figure exactly. that shit out. yeah and i mean like uh, as a novelist i've been thinking a lot about like how the hell can i put content like how can i what is a way to do that just to be like courteous and i'll be i still haven't figured that out so that's honestly one of the reasons why i uh, man i i don't know about you but i feel so bad when because I, I I've talked about it a little bit on this show, uh, where I I just can't, I cannot handle children being hurt. Um, yeah. I I it is just it is so triggering for me. Uh, so I have to look up does the dog die. I have to look up like that in in the app just to just to see. And I feel bad when I don't do that, and something like that happens in a movie. Like I'm watching with my friends, and then like my other friends know that this is something that can bother me, and then they they get like I feel bad because they'll start to feel like oh do we need to stop and this yeah. that, and the other. And I'm just like oh god. <laughs> uh, so uh. so my girlfriend, um, I hope she doesn't listen to this because she hates when when uh, information gets out about her in any shape or fashion but she really does not like zombies and i think that is fair i mean zombies are terrifying they're a monster for a reason um and uh in the last doctor strange movie um i actually left the theater because i saw it on the opening night i left the theater immediately like texted her hey just so you know, if you're going to be watching this, there are zombies, so you need to be careful around the third act. Spoilers. Sorry, guys. <laughs> and then, like, went back in, and when I came back out, she's like, yeah, I already knew, but thanks. <laughs> but, but, I mean, I can't, like, I can't believe, I can't believe you spoiled Doctor Strange for me. I know, oh, no. it's only, like, a four-year-old movie. Is it no? Is it really a fucking four year old movie I at this point? So. No, yeah. no, not yeah. not the not the madness the one, new like one two. Is, yeah, <gasps> maybe this no. two. No, don't don't tell me that. I'll feel like I'll start shrinking. Hold on, <laughs> uh, now I have to know. Hey, Doctor hold on. Now Strange I gotta it. and Multiverse of Madness. It was a two thousand two film. Thank God. Oh, so it, okay. Oh, well, sorry. Oh, I was about Ooh. to wither away. <laughs> I was about to just. I was time about to just... has no meaning. Time has no meaning anymore. I'm sorry. It, oh, God, it needs to start having a meaning before I Thanos get Thanos snapped out of existence. <laughs> uh, um, but um, with all that said, like role playing is is it is such a rewarding experience, and I and I want to know your opinion about this. It's it is such a rewarding experience, but it can also be such a daunting and somewhat dangerous experience as well uh especially if you are like if you're very unaware of what can happen in the community because like like dark shit can happen in the mm -hmm. community itself and like but that's with pretty much any community but as you get more experience you learn how to navigate the waters or hopefully you never have to deal with the dark shit in the first place so what what are your thoughts on that so my thoughts on that is that you you are absolutely right and it kind of also goes back to what i was saying earlier about a lot of times when people are role playing there's going to be something in their storyline that directly emotionally attaches to something inside of them and it can be really easy to get completely lost in role play it can get really easy to use it too far into escapism. I know that that's not like 
where you were going with it, but um... well, that that is one of the dangers. I I did try to get one of my friends on the show who no longer role plays, um, and that's because she was just sinking all of her time and life into it, and yeah. like. I want people to understand like there is there's the good and uh-huh. then there's definitely the bad as well and uh role play addiction is what I'm going to term it as uh, is something that you can get uh, addicted to and, and it, that it, is it, it, also part of why I had to kind of pull back because I was literally spending you know 10 12 hours a day at my job and then i would come home and spend another eight hours role playing so it it literally became another job and i would end up spending so much time worrying about the balance between like uh the rp and like am i around enough am i giving people enough attention if you're running multiple characters then then there's that balance that you have to figure out god yeah and so oh that actually reminded me so a long long time ago like right when i was first uh rping i ended up in a guild with this one guy who will remain nameless and um he in and out of character was just a massive asshole but as like I don't know. I'm I'm the type of person who I try to always see the good in people and I'm the type of person who will basically always like befriend the underdog because like you might act like a dick but what what is the reason behind it? Anger is an easy emotion that covers up other things and it's just kind of how I am. I want to get past that anger and see what's actually there. See like understand it. Um and he was one of the like he was kind of like that and so he was nice to me but to the rest of the guild in and out of character he was a jerk and because i had been able to kind of get past that shell enough i spent a lot of my time when he pissed somebody off i would be the one to turn around and have to like like kind of smooth things over um but that sounds exhausting it it was and it the it was exhausting when it was just that, but he came to expect that. And it got to the point where he would have these massive blow ups. And at one point I decided, no, this was not this was not my me acting childish. This was not my tantrum. I'm not going to clean up after your tantrum. I'm not your mom and you're not a child. And I refused to clean up after him. And he got so mad like he uh he refused he refused to just say i'm sorry to the rest of his guild to the ones that he had made mad and that's all it would have taken that's all it would have taken he refused so long and so hard that it carried off of the server and into my freaking phone and like i almost got i did get in trouble at work that day because i had multiple people like texting me about it because he was like going just spiraling so freaking hard because he had to take accountability for something and it ended up with like the entire friend group like imploding yeah oh i hate that like like yeah it's just online but that just online it can carry over very very easily because we are humans as social creatures we want to have that closeness and it makes it so easy for that closeness that you know starts from role play to carry over into like your actual day to day day to day yeah your actual life that is that is something that i I hate that that happened, but it, it that is something everyone else like like people have to understand. Sometimes people do come to the community to have a sort of fulfillment, uh, whether that is what is what's the term? Can you help me out? I I can't like think escapism? of the term. Yeah, yeah. I guess that would be the best way to put it. It's like just a sense of escapism. Yeah. Um. Or and like a way to like f- like a way to meet a need that's not being met in their real life. Right, yeah. And it it does happen. Um uh, and you are probably going to have to navigate around that a little bit. But I guarantee you a lot of the people who come in aren't all like that. And the people who do come in to uh, to find escapism, I mean that's that's not a bad thing. It's a bad thing when it gets to the point where it's overwhelmingly maybe escapism isn't the right word. Maybe we're more thinking power tripping. 
Yeah, power shipping. Yeah, yeah. Is no, that's... that would that would do it. Yeah. I'm sitting here thinking to myself, oh shit, was this was that me somehow? Did I do that? Fuck. No, it was not you. Thank God. <laughs> Anyways. Uh sorry, I sort of went on another damn tangent. <laughs> I I seem to be doing that a lot tonight. I'm very sorry. Don't no, that hey, I thought that's what the purpose of these conversations were for. It's not Absolutely. It's not a conversation if only one side is talking. Then it's just an interview and you know, we talked a little bit earlier about how that's not what you're aiming for. Right? Yes, thank you. Yep, see, there you go. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, I how did you get into role playing in the first place? Um <laughs> so I've been role playing since I was twelve. Um, I first oh god, this is gonna date me. Uh, I was living overseas. I lived in Kuwait for most of my life, and because that is like a freaking twelve-hour time difference, and um, I didn't really like, like, I didn't really speak the language very well. There weren't a lot of kids in my area because most of them were either embassy kids and lived close to the embassy or they were um, military brats and lived on the base and I didn't do either of that. So my um, way to kind of um, get that like social need met was I actually found a chat room. You remember those browser-based chat rooms? Remember when that was a thing? Uh-huh. Like, like the whole Yahoo chat rooms. And I think like this one actually pre predated that. And so it was called the IWT, the Inn of the Weary Traveler. And it was basically a room where it was, it was my first experience with, you know how when you're in an MMO and there's a whole bunch of RPs happening all at the same time, you kind of got to like filter through what's theirs versus what's yours. It was like that, but there, but because it was all text based, there were no characters that you could like say, "Oh, this guy just walked up to me. I should probably check for his nameplate showing up in my chat box." Um, but it did a lot of RP there, and um, it was it was kind of funny because some of the tropes that would come out of it, like there was this one girl who her entrance was she was always could be spotted running past through the window, and so like people started like making like a meme about her basically but so yeah so i started rping there and then that actually carried over to um school where we would uh do pen and paper rp and then uh then live journal and all its little offshoots happened and so moved into forum rp from there and then got into mmos and that lasted a good long while while doing like one-on-one um, -on -one RP on the side. Like I still do uh, like one-on-one uh, -on -one RP um, through Discord now. Um, but yeah, so yeah, basically that. And let's see, what's the most recent one? I think the one-on-one -on -one through like through like Discord meetup kind of stuff is what I mostly do now. Yeah, I I'm just now getting back to the point where I can where I feel comfortable enough uh where to um where I feel comfortable enough to um get back into MMO role playing. Mm -hmm. Uh I uh, what was it? So when you I, I I am wondering uh and this is going to sound a little little strange. When you got into MMO role play. Mm -hmm. Did that feel forbidden to you, like at all? Uh, actually, yes, because I. Oh, and I also, I just remembered. I also um am a DM, so I also do like D and D RP. Um, yeah, but uh, yes. So I actually, <laughs> I got started with WoW. That was my first MMO. Um, I had been putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. This friend at work had been pushing and pushing and pushing, wanting me to come and join her guild. Then one day she shows up at my house with her husband and their fucking computers, not laptops, like actual, he's got monitors under each arm, Hard whole, hardcore, like actual desktop computers. Can and, I ask what, like what year this was? I just want to know like how uh, it was. Thick IWT, so or not IWT, uh, ICC. So, um, uh, what's the name of that expansion? Wrath, Wrath. 
Wrath of the Lich King. Yes. Oh my god. Yep. We that's we still had those big chunk boys mm -hmm. back then. Mm-hmm. Well, um, I actually I build my own computer, so mine's always a big chunky boy, but yes, it was mm -hmm. like especially a big chunky boy then. And they basically sat down, they're like, You're gonna play the trial and then you're gonna join with us. And I was like, All right. So uh This is fucking happening whether you yeah. like it or not. Mm -hmm. That's exactly, exactly. Um, so I did, and I joined up, uh, as a paladin healer for them, and I remember getting so much crap because I was still learning how to play the game, and I was a rep pally with, um, a sword and board because I didn't understand how the game <laughs> worked, and mm -hmm. I got so much shit for that, um, but, uh... My friend and I, like, we would were playing on a non-RP server, and we were essentially being geared up to be raiders, but we were having a lot of fun, like, when we would, like, sneak off by ourselves, we would, like, ro like roleplay, because it's like, there's so much lore, and nobody's doing anything with it. And then eventually, um, we decided to kind of, like, sneak away and move to a different server, like roll a character on a different server on, on an actual RP server. And that's actually how Jax got his start was because um, she had rolled up a Blood Elf Paladin and I went, like, I tried to do a Warlock and I just wasn't feeling it. And I tried to be a Hunter and I just wasn't feeling it. And I tried to be a Paladin. I was like, I already got a Paladin. And I finally landed on Rogue and, like, that was how he started with all his RP was uh, he was just a really shitty Rogue. And so I would, like, sneak around in stealth to other players. And, of course, back then, if somebody was stealth, um, but they got, like, they were low enough level compared to you, you could still see them. I don't remember if that's still a thing, but I remember it was different. Yeah. Though. And the people would be like, I see you, Rogue. And he would be like, no, you don't. <laughs> and yeah. totally give himself Just, away. No, yeah. But, Absolutely like, not. but it definitely felt forbidden on the raiding server. Because, like, people kind of, like, look down at you and stuff. I and, know! And it's God. like, why? It's, and, but I've kind of come to the... So that was, that was part of my own personal arc for a long time was, like, people... If you have a hobby or something that you like, there's always going to be somebody who's going to be like, Ew, that's dumb. Why do you like that? Like, like so many things like I don't usually like sharing my cooking blog because I feel like people are going to be like well that's dumb I mean nice that you cook but being fully in character that's stupid that's weird you're weird uh, wow and it's what a only weirdo. And I've gotten that and it's only been in the past couple of years that I've sort of realized well I would rather be weird than boring and that's true god that's true because, I mean, I do a lot of weird shit, and, like, because I brew mead, and I like to cook, and I have a rock tumbler, and I raise reptiles, and right now I am breeding um, shrimp, and I do aquascaping, and I have a poison garden. You say you and... breed shrimp? Yep. Yep. That's awesome. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you How a picture. How do you breed shrimp? Uh, honestly, you just get them in uh, somewhere where other things won't eat them, and they'll they'll do it themselves. I'll send you a picture of um, my one of my females. Uh, her name is uh, Greg because she's pregnant. Um, she was the first one to actually like because when when shrimp um, are like when Neocaridina shrimp have their babies, they lay their eggs and it's up in the back of their head like like where mm -hmm. the back of your neck would be. And then the eggs get fertilized. And as they get fertilized, they move down to underneath her tail and she hangs onto them. And you can see when she's got her eggies and that's called being buried. And uh, I'm actually like looking at one, I've got a tank um, right here next to me. And uh, I got a female who's standing upside down on my filter uh, with her little eggies. And it's Tell really them I cool. said hello. I will. I don't know what this one's name is. You want to name her? Um, bright red with green eggs. Uh, okay. Bright red with green eggs. Mm -hmm. Okay, hold on. Hold on. I'm gonna. <gasps> no, I got it. Go... Can we name her Apple? Yes. I love Apple. Apple the shrimp. Ah. So, uh... And what's funny is her breed is a cherry shrimp, so she's a cherry apple <gasps> or an apple. Oh, I love her. But I'll I send you a picture her. of her. 
uh all right y'all guys hear it first here i'm the proud <laughs> i'm the i'm the proud adopted father of this trip yes i'm very happy about it anyways i'm sorry <laughs> i'm starting to lose my head over here um but god uh i when i got into role playing when i got into role playing it was so it, it just felt so because back it was back during vanilla world of warcraft that oh, wow. i got into the role playing yeah i just saw like two people doing it and i was like i wanna i wanna do that can i can i join you please and uh thankfully they let me and that was my journey into the world i didn't know what the fuck i was doing i was playing a <laughs> human shaman um, oh fun oh, that's i know fun. It, it was not fun at the time that's one of those things where where people were just so fucking opinionated about the um about the the not i shouldn't say opinionated they were very set in in the 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 lore Mm -hmm. like they they wouldn't explore anything else they're like humans can't be shamans class-wise so they can't be uh they can't be um they can't be uh, uh shamans um role play wise but that's and so I... silly that's so yes. silly i i just i adore my favorite thing in the world is doing stuff that hasn't been done before like uh an in character food blog that's never been done before i mean it yeah. probably has but like not, uh, well, not super common uh, i've never I... I until i saw yours i never seen one then cool maybe i am the first but like I really love characters that are weird and that don't match with like I mean there's one thing about like being like well I'm an all powerful like okay this is no shade on dragon players because I love dragon players that when they're done right um, I actually knew someone who played a Naru in disguise who was raised by goblins and was oh my god she was just amazing she was absolutely amazing but i love the weird stuff like that and a human mm-hmm. shaman where humans can't be shaman that fits right in like in my current D campaign um i have uh two warlocks that don't know that they're warlocks they think that they are bards they think that they are competing bards um they are based off of shakespeare and uh ben johnson who was his rival at the time and Mm. their patrons are actually um uh rival deities who just really like the arts and they both think that they're bards that can accidentally shoot crap out of their hands and I what? love that. I love yeah. it. Or I have uh, my favorite character, and I'm sure Dartombe can tell you more about her. Um, sh- when I play on Star Wars Online, um, my favorite character is a Mandalorian human female, and she mm-hmm. is married to a Sith Lord. She has like a pure blood Sith. Uh, she has two pure blood kids all of who are force sensitive. She's got a weird version of force sensitivity herself. She doesn't believe in the force. She calls them space wizards and she like comes up with every excuse in the book to explain away force powers. Um, yeah, because they're weird space wizards. Because they they're weird space wizards. Like, like Kayla, like her husband electrocuted someone is, and was like, like, it's the force. This is the force. Look, I am shooting electricity from my hands. You can't explain it aside from the force. And she's like, sure I can. You're just using your electric glands. <laughs> I think it broke his brain the first time she said that. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm laughing about it. Oh, I, I, I love her so much. She is stubborn. She sounds incarnate. fantastic. I fucking love that. Um, I'm very, I do, we were talking about this a little bit earlier. It was like, it's, it, it is easy to get attached to your characters because you put, you put a lot of soul in, into them and you, and you bond with your, like, not only, uh, I want like people out there who are listening that you, you, you bond not with just with your character to other characters or you with the other players, mm-hmm. but you also bond with your character. Like well, your character is going to be an extension of you in some form or fashion. Exactly. And a long time ago, um, uh, I kind of came to the realization that when you do anything creative, when you do anything that you put your heart and soul into, like um, creating a, a character is a great example. You are basically giving a piece of your soul shape and form 
Mm-hmm. That's very awesome. I've never heard it like that, but I think that is, I think that is the coolest thing that has been said to like today. <laughs> In the existence of mankind, I'm going to go further with this. (laughs) Well, thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But but we, uh, you go ahead, you finish up. Oh, but yeah, just basically that, like, yes, you're going to be attached to something that you create because it is a shard of your soul. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's all, that's, that's all I was saying about that. Yeah, well... Unfortunately, we're <laughs> very, very unfortunately, we are at the hour mark, and I'm really upset because this has just been just such a delightful conversation. <laughs> I have absolutely enjoyed it. I would love to come back anytime. Uh, you are more than welcome to. Oh my god, you are more than welcome to. I hope that everybody, I hope that everybody out there had fun listening to us, and I'm sorry <laughs> for ranting so much today. I, I don't um, think you ranted that much at all, if my opinion uh, matters at all. I see the picture of Apple. I love Apple. <laughs> you see her little, like, kind of near she, her middle, her little green berries? Yeah, I just bought, okay, I shit you not, I, I backed on Kickstarter. I have, a, I love collecting and wearing enamel pins. They're sort of a guilty pleasure of mine. Mm-hmm. I backed and, and kickstarted a, an enamel pin of a shrimp with her eggs. Oh my god, uh, you, ha- you have so, to, to link me that. I'll, I'll, I'll definitely show that to you. Really quick, do you have anything to say to people who are just interested in role-playing or who are currently in role-playing? Like, just, do you have anything you want to say before we go about, like, to the role-playing community? Yeah. Um, I want to challenge everybody out there to be brave. If you have that weird idea, like a shaman that is a class that can't be a shaman, do it. Or if you have a... A, a, a warlock who thinks he's a bard do it you have something crazy chaotic that you want to try i want to challenge you to be brave and do it there's mm-hmm. going to be people out there who aren't going to like it but there's going to be people out there who are just gonna love it and that's what's yeah. going to make it all worth it yeah and as long as you are not like going out of your way to physically just fuck with someone's role play mm-hmm. you can pretty much just do whatever you want as yep. long as you're trying, like, as long as you're being respectful uh, to those around you, you you can do just about just damn anything. Yep. yep. I'm ranting and, again. And the world needs more originality. It really does. And more does. creativity, and more chaos that doesn't hurt people. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That oh, is very true. And before we go, I also did want to um, uh, plug the website. If you don't yes. mind adding a link to it, uh, the website is feed-the-horde.com. Mm-hmm. And I will actually probably, as soon as things kind of calm down in my world, probably be starting it back up again. Um, and also, I am always taking submissions for new food ideas. does not have to be uh, Warcraft related. I am also branching out to um, other uh, fandoms and finding weird ways to uh mix those in and get those in as well i have i have one for you right now okay if if you if you are up to it i'd be interested in what you're doing it's one of the first things you learn to cook in world of warcraft can you can you guess what it is uh the is that the spice bread well yeah spice bread is uh, one of them the not the charred wolf meat the spider legs Oh yes, I can definitely do that. That was. Uh, I would be so interested because I wanted to. I I've been thinking about like cooking spider legs. <laughs> this, I want <laughs> not cooking actual spider legs, people. <laughs> I just want to know how someone would interpret that. I will. I can definitely do that. Um, I actually sort of did a little bit of a version of that in the crab ragoon one um if you look on the can it is the crab quote in quotes meat from duskwood there are mm-hmm. no crabs in duskwood there are giant spiders in duskwood but there are no oh, crabs in duskwood oh god <laughs> that's right yeah i there don't are think no... anybody caught that oh <laughs> uh, no i didn't and if you would like to catch that i will absolutely share that in the meme channel on our discord please come and say <laughs> hi and thank you so much Jax, for coming on and talking with me absolutely thank you so much for having me <laughs>